up in an orphanage and always dreamed of a strong family and happy, joyful children. Igor asked me to marry him when I was just starting technical school. I always wanted to be a designer and sew clothes. But he was a prominent grown-up man, promised me to open an atelier, gave me flowers and gifts. Life seemed like a fairy tale to me. Soon I learned that we were going to have a baby. I could not believe my happiness. A dream come true of family, a house, a baby who would have a mom, a dad, and lots and lots of stuff. I continued to study, sewed for the future baby nappies and diapers my husband bought me a sewing machine, which I had dreamed of since childhood. Those were the most wonderful months of my life. When things didn't go well in their firm, I immediately felt like a stranger in this house. And with each passing day, Yuga grew colder and colder. As if it was my fault that the customers are becoming less and less. There was just less money. He started drinking. And I'm due in a month. How much can you eat? Have you seen yourself in the mirror? I have. I'm carrying his baby, and I'm just eating for two now. But he screams every day. And he's drinking more and more. I was insanely afraid that my little dream had suddenly become so fragile and could fall apart at any second. I gave birth two weeks early, exhausted by thoughts of a frightening future. I was afraid to go home, knowing that my husband was turning into a tyrant. And he had become one. Gradually passed the sleepless nights when our baby girl cried, the half-starved days when money was almost gone, and the increasingly drunken cries that if he hadn't picked me up, everything would have been fine with him. He first hit me when Barbara was only four months old, and his business finally fell apart. For drinking my tea too loudly while rocking our daughter and disturbing his sleep. At that moment, burned by the sound of the slap, the hot tea, the breath, and the me you never set foot here with that one who is always yelling, I realized that my world had fallen apart. And then there was a half-sleep dream filled with tears, hunger, barbers crying, fear, and utter despair. The woman who picked us up became our angel savior. Margareta Sergeevna was terribly lonely. Her children had long since grown up and left for other countries, her husband had left quite some time ago, and now her life was sad, poor, and devoid of any meaning. She had never seen her grandchildren, and longed to live to see the day when their voices would ring out in her home. Every day she went to the playground and watched in tears as other people's children fiddled in the sand. That's where we met. The person who has known sorrow in life can immediately see those who are also suffering. Thus began our new life in her modest, but very welcoming home.